Uh, please give us a brief introduction. Yes. Uh, my name is Ritwik Sasmal, and uh, I have finished my BLLB honors from Hidayatullah National Law University, Raipur, in the year 2015. Uh, before that, I have done my uh, schooling from DAV Chandra Shekharpur, my matriculation, and my 12th from BJP Junior College. Okay, please tell us something about your hobbies and interests. Uh, so I have uh, a keen interest in uh, playing music. I am trained in uh, playing eight instruments. I compose music of my own. And apart from that, I have a hobby of uh, writing uh, uh, as well. I enjoy writing on topics of uh, philosophy and modern literature. And apart from that, I also enjoy uh, cycling as uh, an uh, hobby in terms of exercise. Okay. So, um, why are you interested in joining uh, as, a, as an assistant uh, director of law? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, actually, the entire uh, process of uh, administration in terms of the uh, legal aspect uh, fascinates me very much. Uh, as an assistant director of law, I'm aware of the fact that uh, I will be um, examining various uh, proposals and suggesting uh, uh, modifications or alterations in terms of uh, various legal policies or provisions uh, that may be implemented in the future. Uh, therefore, sir, I believe that uh, my application uh, or the way that uh, I can apply my brain uh, would be uh, quite constructive in terms of my interest in constitutional law as well specifically and as i know all uh, service uh, matters involve uh, constitutional law to a great extent uh, i would like to therefore uh, join this service okay so um, if you are joining now as assistant director law where do you see yourself after let's say 15 or 20 years sir um, by Pursuing uh, the service uh, with my fullest effort, I intend to reach to the level of uh, director law. OK, fine. So <clears throat> uh, in brief, can you tell me after you join, what will be your uh, uh, you know, major duties and responsibilities as assistant director law? So my primary responsibility uh, would be, first of all, to handle all the legal matters associated with the uh, department that I would be posted in. Uh, it would also involve responsibilities with respect to uh, uh, liaisoning with other departments with respect to various matters. Then I would also uh, be involved in advising the Directorate of uh, Prosecution for any uh, cases that the government has to uh, take care of. Uh, apart from this, I will also be involved in uh, creating uh, legal literacy programs uh, for various departments and uh, the general public as and when uh, required. Uh, so uh, apart from this, I believe as well, uh, in case of uh, legislative uh, proposals uh, that are made, I would probably also be required to uh, ascertain and give my advice as to the constitutionality of the proposed action or uh, the other aspects of it. OK, fine. So um, then let us start with uh, some of the basic questions related to your uh, you know, service law and all. So um, can you tell me what is the meaning of uh, compensatory allowance and when it is uh, when is that given? Yes. So compensatory allowance is uh, provided for in uh, rule number 12 of the Odisha Service Code. Uh, compensatory allowance is any allowance that is given on account of any personal uh, expenditure that is made uh, by the government servant uh, and also to take care of any uh, necessitous circumstances in which duty is uh, performed. So an example of uh, compensatory allowance uh, would be a traveling allowance, for instance, or uh, would also be a house rent allowance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are aware about uh, the you know the various uh, <clears throat> rules related to your pension of government servants. Yes. Sir. So 
uh, what is the provisional pension and why provisional pension is given yes sir uh, provisional pension is uh, enshrined in uh, rule number 65 of the odisha civil service uh, pension rules uh, in the normal procedure of sanction of pension is that uh, the appointing authority the pension sanction authority will receive the papers from the head office uh, from the head of the office and uh, he will then forward the papers to the uh, accounts department but in many cases it so happens that the uh, appointing authority is unable to send the papers in time or it has sent the papers but the uh, accounts department has sent back uh, the papers to the appointing authority for some changes and it is clear to the appointing authority that pension will not be sanctioned before uh, the government servant retires so in this sort of a situation the appointing authority will uh, quickly calculate the qualifying service from whatever preliminary uh, checking it can do and take a written statement of uh, the government servant regarding the years of service and uh, will sanction uh, provisional pension to be paid before the final pension is uh, sanctioned uh, using form n of uh, the civil service pension and sir uh, under this uh, provision gratuity can also be sanctioned but these will be adjusted against the final order that is uh, sanctioned. So in specific cases where departmental proceedings are underway, the rule 66 says that the provisional pension can be granted, but gratuity will not be granted. But in case it is a proceeding in which minor penalty is to be imposed under the speed of clarification control of the use, in that situation, gratuity can be Um. So, what do you mean by family pension? And uh, when is that uh, generally given? Uh, so, family pension is again a benefit that is provided to the family members of the government servant specifically. Uh, now, family pension is uh, given when the government servant either uh, uh, dies in service or uh, dies after retirement. Uh, so, family pension is given in Rule 56 of the Civil Service Pension Rules, and it is to the extent of 30% uh, of the last uh, emoluments. Uh, that would be so it's a measure of social security uh, given in consideration for the service that the government servant has rendered uh, to the family of the government servant Sir, so extraordinary pension uh, is given to those people, first of all, to whom the Workmen's Compensation Act does not apply. It is given in those uh, specific situations where uh, a person has uh, been uh, disabled or is uh, diseased, according to specific categories that are specified in Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 of the rules. So if a person has been disabled or diseased because of anything that is attributable to the service that he was carrying, uh, then in that situation, it becomes the duty of the government to give him an extraordinary pension uh, for this disability or uh, for this disease. And this pension can be given in addition to the other pension that he is to uh, receive. Um, what is this compassionate allowance and uh, uh, in what circumstances? Yes, sir. Sir, so compassionate allowance is provided for in Rule 45 of uh, so if I may correct it, actually, um, sir, I'm not being able to precisely recall, but I believe it's 45 or 46 of the, yes, sir. Uh, so in that, if a person has been compulsorily uh, retired or dismissed or uh, removed from service, basically, if any major penalty has been imposed on him and he has been um, uh, dismissed from service, then in this situation, the uh, uh, authority which is imposing the penalty if it considers the case of this government servant and thinks it is justified, then uh, he may sanction a certain amount of uh, money, which is not more than two thirds of the pension that this person was uh, supposed to get. Because in the ordinary course, uh, uh, the moment any major penalty is imposed, the person forfeits his pension. But on consideration of uh, uh, the uh, authority, he may get a compassionate allowance to the extent of two thirds of uh, the pension. Oh. Okay. So uh, now uh, coming to some uh, basic concepts of the uh, service code. So 
what is the can you tell me uh, what is the concept of uh, how what is the total uh, what is the aim of uh, your uh, service code what is the service code and to which uh, all classes of uh, server development servers that is that yes sir sir um, first of all uh, the the reason, the purpose behind the Odisha service code is to uh, lay down the conditions of service uh, regarding government service. Now, Article 309 of the Constitution says that uh, till certain uh, laws or legislation is framed in this regard, any rules made by the president or the governor with respect to union or state service will continue. So in uh, recognition of the principle of Article 309, there is also Article 313, which says that if there is any provision which has been existing before commencement of constitution, then if the same regulates conditions of service, that will continue. Odisha Service Code sir, has been uh, enacted uh, with effect from 1st April 1939 with the intention of regulating conditions of uh, service. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, appointment of the initial appointment, um, uh, fixation of pay, uh, joining time, leave, uh, foreign service, and uh, so on, sir. Uh, and, sir, it ap applies to uh, all the gadgeted uh, government servants, which means class 1 and class 2, or otherwise known as group A and group B servants, and all the others who are uh, declared as specially, uh, specially declared to be gadgeted uh, servants. So, uh, uh, group C and group D servants, uh, their conditions of service mostly the parts that are not touched by Odisha Service Code are regulated by the Odisha Subordinate Service uh, Rules. Okay. Um, so, uh, can you tell me what is uh, what do you mean by leave salary, and uh, if you can specify the quantum of uh, leave salary? Yes, indeed, sir. Uh, sir, any uh, payment, uh, any salary that is paid to a government servant uh, during the period on which he is on leave is known as leave salary. Uh, the provision of leave salary uh, is mentioned in Rule 164, if I'm not wrong, of the Odisha Service Code. So if the person is uh, on leave on uh, average pay, then uh, he shall be paid uh, the uh, full average pay. If he is on leave on half average pay, then he will be paid uh, uh, half amount of uh, that salary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you mean by lien? So lien is the right of a government servant uh, to hold a permanent post or a tenure post immediately or on the termination of a period of absence. Essentially, it's a substantive right to hold a post. OK. So we were uh, discussing about types of pension. So uh, can you tell me what are the types of uh, pension? Yes, sir. So the types of pension are uh, compensatory pension, invalid pension, superannuation pension, and uh, retiring pension. Compensation pension uh, is mentioned in rule number 37 uh, of the, sir, I might be incorrect with the number, but. Okay, that is fine. Uh, so the concept is uh, that any pension that is given to a person on the abolition of his post, uh, of course, there is a provision for uh, uh, an additional appointment if he may choose to take if he takes the appointment that he will not get the compensation pension otherwise he will get the pension if the post is abolished um, and sir invalid pension is when the person is rendered uh, permanently incapacitated for further service um, and superannuation pension is when the government servant reaches the maximum allowed age for uh, service um, and retiring pension is essentially when the government servant reaches uh, 50 years of age or has completed 30 years of qualifying service, then in that situation, he may give three months uh, notice to the appointing authority or in the other uh, way, the appointing authority uh, may choose to retire the government servant by giving him three months notice, which is otherwise also, I think, uh, synonymous with uh, compulsory uh, retirement. Uh, so, so these are the four kinds of uh, pension that are mentioned. So apart from uh, this, I believe there is uh, also pension that is uh, uh, payable on absorption into uh, public sector bodies from the government. Uh, this is under Rule 43 and pension payable on absorption into autonomous bodies. 
and there is also the provision for uh, compassionate allowance which is paid in case um, a major penalty is imposed and the pension is forfeited okay uh, similarly what if, uh, what is a gratuity and uh, how many types of gratuity uh, are there so gratuity as distinct from pension which happens to be an amount that is paid in consideration for past service gratuity is a recognition of the uh, service that has been rendered and is uh, given uh, not exactly as a bounty by the government but as a mark of uh, respect and uh, gratuity again is um, of uh, sir uh, four kinds um, there is a service gratuity a retirement gratuity a death gratuity and residuary gratuity uh, so service gratuity is any gratuity that is paid before uh, completion of 10 years of uh, qualifying service and it is paid at the rate of uh, half months uh, emoluments for every uh, completed year of service if I'm not wrong. Uh, so retirement gratuity uh, as given in rule 49 of the OCS pension rules is uh, one fourth of uh, the emoluments for every completed six monthly period of uh, service to a maximum of 16 and a half times the emoluments. Uh, so death gratuity again there is there are different slabs for the same uh, death uh, gratuity is for uh, sir uh, uh, one year of service it's twice the emoluments for one to five years of service it's six times the emoluments for five to eleven times uh, five to eleven years of service it's twelve times the emoluments for twelve to twenty years it's I think uh, twenty times the emoluments and anything above that to a maximum of uh, uh, 33 times the emoluments uh, can be uh, awarded. And so the maximum value for uh, retirement and uh, death gratuity currently is, uh, I believe, uh, sir, uh, 10 lakh. Mm -hmm. OK. So let us now go to some of the other uh, common questions. Um, so uh, can you tell me, uh, under uh, our constitution, um, right to vote, what is the position of right to vote? Is it a constitutional right or a fundamental right? So the right to vote is not exactly a fundamental right. Uh, the right to choose the candidate is a fundamental right because it is intricately linked to uh, right to free speech and expression. But sir, right to vote per se is a legal right which is guaranteed by Article 325 or 326 of the Constitution, which talks about universal adult franchise. Okay. So, uh, under our uh, Constitution, um, can you give me one or two examples of rights which are constitutional rights, but uh, they are not fundamental rights? Sir, under the cons uh, constitution, there is the freedom of interstate trade and commerce given in Article 301, uh, which is a constitutional right, but it is not a fundamental right. Uh, sir, apart from that, there is also the right to property given in Article 300A, uh, which is again a constitutional right. And there is also the right to vote uh, given in Article 325 or 326. Okay. okay. So... Currently, uh, there's the, a the lot of uh, issue or a lot of talk going on about uh, inclusion of information technology uh, in administration. Suppose uh, you join as assistant director law, okay, and uh, the government wants to know, okay, what are the things that you would like to modernize in your office? Okay, or how this information technology, artificial intelligence, etc., can help you in your work. So, what will be your uh, reply? Uh, indeed, sir. Sir, uh, a major aspect of uh, information technology today is artificial intelligence. Um, so, I believe that if we have already provided for the digitization of documents, and we have all these documents, uh, uh, for instance, in a Word format or in a PDF format, then we should be able to uh, run a software to be able to extract uh, uh, the best possible information for any uh, legal activity. Uh, so as an example, I would like to state, let's say uh, that uh, there is a particular question where I'm uh, expected to um, 
tender certain amount of legal research, then I should be able to feed the particular uh, fact situation or the case and uh, be able to get a particular uh, solution out. And so currently, uh, such kind of software have also been implemented in many situations. Uh, so I would like to uh, suggest uh, the incorporation of this. Okay. Um, also, uh, what do you think? Uh, what are the other reforms that are needed, generally speaking, not in context of any particular department? Overall, what are the reforms, top three reforms that should uh, happen in a you know public uh, office, in a government office? So the first reform that I believe that should happen is there should be more uh, training in uh, information technology uh, so that all government servants starting from uh, the whether they are group A servants or group C servants, uh, they should all be able to uh, ensure that the entire workflow starting from the uh, simplest proposal made by uh, uh, a, a member of parliament, I'm sorry, a member of legislative assembly to its uh, ultimate uh, taking shape in the departments, uh, to its ultimate execution, all of these uh, stages uh, should be um, incorporated in terms of uh, uh, the workflow in information technology. And uh, it should be monitored uh, via specific software that uh, ensure that all the um, uh, elements have been correctly followed. That's the first suggestion. So secondly, um, I believe, uh, that uh, there should be more uh, uh, education in terms of uh, legal awareness amongst uh, all departments, uh, not only in terms of uh, their specific duties, but also in terms of their uh, uh, rights when it comes to service conditions. Um, thirdly, sir, uh, so these are the two that I can think of at the moment. Okay. So currently, uh, if you see the overall uh, situation in India related to the relations between the judiciary and uh, the government, um, what is your opinion regarding the judges, uh, you know, the way in which judges to high courts and Supreme Court, they are selected? Uh, by the collegium. Yes, sir. There has been major uh, issues uh, with the recommendations of the collegium and the government. Collegium has recommended many times, but government is not, uh, you know, um, giving them the posting. Okay, so uh, yes. what what is your opinion? Is do you think that this collegium system is best, or uh, do you have any other alternative uh, uh, systems for? Uh, higher judiciary for selection into the higher judiciary sir uh, i believe that the collegium system is actually a relic of the past and the reason i would say that is because in practice it has been noticed that the judges who are ultimately uh, being uh, suggested uh, by the courts are more often than not the people who are uh, very close to the judges who are already presently in power now by taking the ex excuse of uh, independence of judiciary this leads to a situation where uh, a cottage is being created in the judiciary, which um, sort of uh, does, disables, uh, for instance, the officers at the lowest rung of the administration from reaching uh, the top. So apart from that, I believe that, uh, uh, yes, indeed, independence of judiciary should be ensured. But at the same time, because the government is appointing these uh, judges, it should have a greater amount of say in the process. Uh, such um, uh, suggestions should be a two-way street. It should not be only uh, suggestions that are made by uh, the judges. Uh, sir, I believe that the system introduced by the National Judicial Appointments Commission uh, uh, Act, which has been rendered unconstitutional, that system is uh, uh, sufficiently watertight to ensure that any of the flaws perpetrated by uh, the collegium system are uh, uh, put in its own place. Okay. So last we'll have a situational question. Now suppose uh, 
you are uh, you are selected uh, you know as uh, assistant director law and you have joined the office you have finished your training you have joined the office so suppose uh, you have some personal beliefs on some particular issue and the government is asking your department is asking your legal uh, opinion on something which is related to that issue so what are the steps that you will take to ensure that your personal bias okay does not affect the advice that you are going to give um so first of all because i am a public servant my personal uh, values and my personal bias have absolutely no role to play in the ultimate action that i am about to take or any suggestion that i am about to make uh, for that reason i will absolutely keep uh, my personal bias separate from what i have to uh, suggest to the government uh, as an instance if uh, it's a policy which for instance affects the rights of uh, uh, indigenous people and i have a belief that indigenous people should be given wider rights then i will keep it separate because the position and the office that i occupy requires me to operate within certain boundaries and certain contours and uh, i cannot uh, go beyond the same and so therefore uh, my personal uh, bias has absolutely uh, no role to play in the advice that i will ultimately give okay fine so that will be the end of the interview thank you okay now the feedback tikachi your uh, style of answering content and all is very good okay au khali gote mane presentation and all it is fine kichi satare mote ye kare nahi khali apnara just uh, keep your hands on your knees okay because thoda hatha da move kor okay so it, uh, that is the only thing otherwise uh, quality of answers or content apnara thik hoche gote jinsa jota ki ami dekhi pariba like for example in the collegium question okay if you are asked any kind of controversial question to apna nijara jha ja bhabitile seta bahut clearly kahile okay but taku dekhi ba tike moderate parike taku kahile sir both sides ha both sides na bahut hi extreme ki jiba kotha no in favor or against लाइक rather than uh, you know going into nepotism and all i mean that generally emti koi pariba ki transfer lack of transparency setikire sabu palela ta bitare mane amara point ta bi ta ko kahibar achi at the same time ette bi ta ko beshi ruku na bhabe any controversial topic me so amgo government ra criticism ta constructive criticism kariya achi pura mild way re eta ki se bujhi pari jibe but amgo semti kichhi bi strong words Use for your own. Okay, that's it. Otherwise, it was uh, quite good. Just take it. Our mirror interviews we have done say ten to fifteen. So, our government has all provisions. We have by rule numbers. Our government has done that is quite good. Say it. So they may not ask you like, but I say totally the service law not be possible. Thank you. Okay, so general things or a. उटफ Uh, I'll give you around thirty-eight out of fifty for today's interview. Okay, sir. Uh, what is the like? What should I have done to get more than forty? Ah, uh, say answer ta. Out tikke, amar ata ko tikke aur ye pariyar thila. It was not. Uh, sir, the police man. Ah, uh, police man sir. But other rest things were all fine. Okay. 